Do you want a guy who feels like a me-first guy? And I know there's a lot. It's a team sport, but you do have a lot of me-first guys, it's certainly at wide receiver. But as a running back, he's probably looking at Todd Gurley's contract and saying, I'm every bit as good as Todd Gurley is. And you could make that argument that he is. But you're getting paid $14 million. I know that you want to – you're trying to conserve yourself as much as possible because – as a running back, you only have so many carries, so many hits that you can take. And he's got more touches than any other running back because he's that good. So because he's that good, he's going to get the ball that much more and more opportunity for wear and tear and possibly an injury. I understand it. You know, it's a conundrum. But you're getting paid this money. And I think it's going to be really hard to go. And his teammates are already coming after him. His offensive linemen are coming after him. Now, you may say stuff behind the scenes. And there's always stuff going on behind the scenes where you may talk to somebody about another player on his team and he'll tell you the real story, not publicly. That was what was surprising. These guys put their names, they attach their names to these comments with Le'Veon Bell. I, I, know, I know sometimes you have this drama and controversy and then you come back and then it's kumbaya and then we'll play and hey, we're going to play through this and you know maybe something magical happens here. This is a little bit different where the guy's blocking for you. You know, Ben Roethlisberger, do you have Roethlisberger's uh, comments there from yesterday, Seton, where, you know, he points out that basically it's the offensive line that uh, is the reason for his success. We're a very good offense. You know, football is the ultimate team sport. One person doesn't make or break you. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to say that, that the linemen are more, more important than any skill position player, including myself, on this on this team. So, um, you know, we're more than, this offense is more than just one guy. All right, that's Ben being smart. You know, you want to say something nice about your offensive lineman. You don't want to make it about Le'Veon Bell. You know, if Connor comes in and plays well, you know, that'll, that'll diffuse a little bit. I, maybe does it take away a little bit of the bargaining power or of Le'Veon Bell? Not that he has bargaining power. And people keep bringing up, well, Emmett Smith held out uh, for a couple of games. And the Cowboys went to the Super Bowl, I believe, that year. But... Back then, you could negotiate. There's nothing to negotiate here with Le'Veon Bell. This is his salary, but he's going to lose out on all of this money and then think he's going to make that up with his next contract. I'd be really hesitant to take on Le'Veon Bell at age 27. I mean, you're, you're giving up $900,000 a week, and you're not going to get that back. So you're going to give up about, what, $8 million? And you're not going to get that back. Are you then going to get an Odell Beckham Jr. contract? Because Le'Veon Bell is saying, hey, I'm, I want to be treated differently than a running back. And the same thing with Odell Beckham Jr., that you want to be treated differently. You're not just a wide receiver or running back. But, man, there's some bad blood going on. Bad blood, you know, with the offensive lineman there, which was, uh, was pretty surprising. Here's uh, Marquise Pouncey on Le'Veon Bell sitting out. So I just felt confident that he was going to come, but now that he didn't, obviously, it's Le'Veon over the Steelers, and we're we're the Steelers, and we're going to play as the Steelers. Has anybody talked to him, to your knowledge? We had conversation with him, a couple of the linemen did, and it was all good conversation, but at this point, it's bigger than business. Knowing Le'Veon's a competitor and wants to be the best in the league and go out there and obviously have to prove everything all over again, but obviously he proved all of us wrong. At some point, you're just like, all right, you know what? If you don't want to be here, it is, it is what it is. Then hold out 10 weeks. It's totally fine with us. Like As a team, we're, we're totally fine. It takes 11 guys, not just one. Now when it's game time and you know that you have $14 million looming out there and you're still not here and your team really wants you here, it's just at this point, we got Connor. All right, uh, Ramon Foster, offensive lineman on Le'Veon Bell. In the ultimate team sport, we've created a, a, a league of individuals in a sense. I know the league is all about get your money, get paid. I love it, but my perspective is a whole lot different now. I'm in year 10. This guy, what is Le'Veon, about to go into year 7? You know, you're not getting younger, so win it, get paid next year. Yeah, win it, get paid next year elsewhere. But if you're the Jets or the Colts or one of these other teams that would be in the market for Le'Veon Bell, are you going to go all in on this guy? Because while he does play exceptionally well and he does a variety of things for you, there's a lot of other stuff that's been attached to Le'Veon Bell. Financial demands, drug suspension, social media activity, I mean, it's not just, hey, he goes out there and plays football. There's a lot more that's attached to Le'Veon Bell. And if he wants to be like Odell Beckham Jr., well, 
he's got similar profile here. Now, not the drugs with uh, Odell Beckham, although there were rumors that that was uh, part of a picture that he was involved in. But there's always drama going on there. And you roll the dice. Yeah, Fritzy. I'd like to be a fly on the wall. They all came out together on the same day to uh, you know, go after uh, their teammate. I'm wondering who, you know, who started that and how they decided as a group how they were going to handle future questions where they all happened to come out the same day willing to say those things about Bill. Well, they all thought he was going to show up yesterday. That's why they all said something yesterday. And I'm going to guess, this being Thursday and a game on Sunday, everybody's going to shut up in that Steeler locker room, certainly those offensive linemen. When when the reporters go and ask, you know, hey, you said this yesterday, or do you want to take back what you said yesterday? You still feel strongly as you did yesterday. I think you're going to get a lot of no comment. I'd be, re- be really surprised. M- Mike Tomlin should have that locker room on lockdown and just say, we are talking about the Cleveland Browns. We're not talking about people who aren't here. We're not talking about Le'Veon Bell. We wish him well. He's our teammate. We hope he joins us. We're talking about the Cleveland Browns. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.